The Lord is good and he's worthy to be praised. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not his benefits. We thank the Lord so much for this far that he has brought us, Ebenezer. The Lord is good. He is doing a great work here in the ministry. And I believe he's doing a great work at your place as well and in your life and family. And we thank the Lord so much. We thank him also for you that is taking time to join us here and uh, have our service together with you. And we believe that the Lord will speak to you today in as much as he's speaking to us as well. This is the month of July and I just wanted to welcome you to this seventh month. We know number seven is quite a number in the Bible. But like we are going to see in the book of Revelation, the number seven means a lot. It talks about, of course, a completion. It talks about a finished work. It talks about when God uh, wraps up or he consummates an idea or a purpose. Number seven is used in the Bible many, many times. And if you are to study what we call numerology, which is really a doctrine of numbers where people have taken time to study numbers and their relevance in scripture, you will see that number seven means quite a bit. So welcome to the seventh month. Welcome to July. And uh, if you're watching this in July, this is directly to you. If you're watching it after July, it's still okay. Uh, The Lord's word is still constant in season and out of season. But I just wanted to welcome you to this month of July. And this Sunday service is just to share with you what the Lord has given us as our catch scripture or a catch phrase or catch word uh, for this particular month of July. And to believe God for something supernatural this month. I'm telling you, faith always produces results. Once we believe believe the bible says if we can only believe all things are possible in this month of july the lord took us to the book of revelation chapter number one and uh, reading just two verses verse number five and verse number six remember we are going to study the book of revelation and uh, in our bible study that will be on wednesday a Bible study, we're going to be sharing about uh, the first chapter of Revelation. So there's a lot of teaching that is coming. I'm excited about that one. Please join us on our YouTube channel and be able to get the ministry that will come this Wednesday. Uh, let somebody know about it. Our Bible study will be on and we'll be sharing from Revelation chapter number one. But for our Sunday service today, I'm reading uh, Revelation one, but just two verses, verse five and verse number six. As the Lord begins to minister to us about this month. Now, every month has something unique about it. And every season has something unique about it. The reason we usually ask God what he's saying in a particular month is because we believe that he gives us an opportunity to see months or seasons for specific purposes and also gives us specific direction in those months. So I believe that this is the direction for our month of July. Now this is what John the Revelator wrote in uh, verse number five of Revelation chapter number one. He says, and from Jesus Christ, Oh, even for context, I'll read for you from verse number four. John, to the seven churches which are in Asia, grace be unto you, and peace from him which is, which was, and which is to come. And from the seven spirits, you see the number seven coming up there, and from the seven spirits which are before his throne. Verse number five. And from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness, and the first begotten of the dead. And the prince of the kings of the earth, unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood, and he has made us kings and priests unto God, and his father, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. And the scripture that we want to pick up is verse number six, which says, And he has made us kings and priests unto God. He has made us kings and priests unto God. And his father, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. So I want to stress that line, kings and priests. And this is the office. This is the calling. This is the grace that the Lord is pouring out for us in this month of July that we will begin to manifest as kings and priests unto God. You may want to say that together with me. I'm a king and a priest to my God. I'm being called as a king and a priest unto my God. And as we go deeper in this study, you'll realize that this is such an honorable grace that a man can carry. So the Bible says, 
says, and from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead and the prince of the kings of the earth and to him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood and has made us kings and priests unto God and his father to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. In this month, as we were praying and just asking the Lord, you know, what direction he would want for us to walk into, we began to hear that phrase, kings and priests, kings and priests, kings and priests. But the hearing of that word was in the direction of, you know, that when the Lord begins to anoint a man and grace a man as a king and a priest, the direction of the hearing had a lot to do with a separation for a cause, a separation for a cause. I'll say that again, a separation for a cause. And when we see men like John who are writing these words or to whom this revelation is being given, we realize that these were men who even in their own gospels said a lot about the kings and the priests, the kings and the priests. Now the kings, of course, represent God governance and the priests represent the the spiritual side which would be really the ministry of the spirit the priests represent faith they represent religion they represent you know the connection that uh, that god has with man they represent worship so the kings represent governance while the priests represent worship i'll say that again the kings represent governance and the priests represent worship and in the new testament there is such a collision between the kings and the priests and the kings represented the men that governed the earth they just governed the earth as it were now when jesus came and we see this mostly in the book of matthew the book of matthew was written for us to understand jesus as a king jesus as a king So when Jesus came on the earth, one of the things that happened is there was an antagonism. There was such a shaking, a disturbance because he came as a king and yet there were physical kings at that time. But he came as the king that has been sent this time, not from the earth, but from the heavens. And on top of him coming as a king, he came to instill a kingdom. And yet there were kingdoms that already existed. But this is a king that is coming and he's coming to instill a kingdom. And like we'll see in the scriptures, even up to the time when he was when he was going to be crucified he was always asked over and over again are you a king do you say that you're a king and he would answer them and say you have said it well it has come out of your own mouth because he was a king of a kingdom and he had come with a certain kingdom now the bible is saying that he has made us kings which already connotes that he has called us into governance of kingdom he has called us into the governance area of kingdom and this is one of the areas that very few christians are walking in the area area of governing in the kingdom and I'll try to take some time and explain what that means governance in the kingdom the other side is the side of the priests of course we know that when Jesus came he came as our high priest he came as our high priest but this time as the Bible will say he came in the order of Melchizedek he came in the order of Melchizedek like Hebrews will tell us but the order of Melchizedek was in fact not the order of the Gospels it was not the order of the church or the the priesthood at the time. The priesthood at the time was the priesthood of Aaron. And all the priests up to Zechariah who saw the Lord, all the priests that came, came in the lineage of the Levitical priesthood. But when Jesus came on the earth, he came in the order of Melchizedek, meaning that he was already breaking protocol. He began to minister after the order of Melchizedek. Of course, like the Bible says, who had no history, no father, no mother, no beginning and no end. And of course this is already a picture of Jesus Christ our high priest so Jesus not only came as a king of the heavenly kingdom he also came as the high priest of a heavenly priesthood or the Melchizedek priesthood now when he says that we have been made kings and priests unto God he is saying two things number one we have been made kings to govern God's kingdom and number two we have been made priests to offer worship after the Melchizedek order or the order of Christ our high priest 
Now in this month, why is this important? Two things are important here. We are living at a day where there's a lot of, you know, there's a lot of uncertainty and uh, of course with this whole coronavirus and, you know, governance and, and, and governments and presidents and people over the world are trying to find out how do we rule the earth? How do we actually govern people? In America, you already see the riots that are happening with the Black Lives Matter movement and, you know, the police and should, should the police have the same force as they've always had? There's, there's all across the world i'm telling you there is this question over the presidents and the leaders how do we govern people how do we rule the earth now jesus is saying in this month of july that i am starting up a new spirit of governance in my people i'm giving them now the assignment to desire to have dominion over the earth that i gave them in genesis chapter number one and verse number 26 i am raising out kings i'm raising up kings who will have the desire to rule on my behalf i'm raising up kings who will have the you know the the the, the passion to look after the earth after my order and not after the order of whether it is democracy or or all the other governance systems that help us today and this is the place that i feel the lord is leading us into he is causing the kingdom of god not just to be a faith that is responsible for worship but also to be a spirit that drives governance let me say that again that he's he's raising up our faith not just to be something that drives worship but our faith to also be something that drives the spirit that drives governance you all know that in the book of first samuel when saul was ordained as a king that this was the first time that people of God were going to have a king over them. And the children of Israel said, we want a king like the other kingdoms, all the other people, other nations have a king. Now before there was a king in Israel, God was the king of Israel. He was responsible for governing Israel. And the children of Israel should have never got a king in the first place. But because they wanted to be like the other nations, they asked God and of course God sent his prophet Samuel to anoint Saul to become the first king of Israel. Now listen to this. This is very important. That God had always wanted to be the king over his people. He never desired that his people have a king to rule over them. Because in Genesis chapter number 1, when Adam was given dominion, he was never given dominion over people. He was given dominion over the fish of the sea. He was given dominion over the birds of the air. He was given over system, I mean governance over climate, over the, the soil but never over people. Now, this is my point. My point is that in this season, the Lord is saying that I am raising up a man. I'm raising up a woman. I'm raising up somebody that is going to have on the inside of them a kingly anointing. A kingly anointing. Now, watch what happens. The difference between God's kingdom and man's kingdom is man's kingdom is trying to rule men. God's kingdom will rule over over the spirits watch this now the spirits behind men god's kingdom is a spiritual kingdom so it is a kingdom that goes beyond just the natural governance to spiritual governance this is the place where man men begin to rule dominions they begin to rule principalities they begin to rule the powers of the air they begin to rule the spirit that causes uh, unruliness or causes men to be unruly or ungovernable it is the spirit that God will have over men that checks the spirits of men so God is speaking to us in this season that I would want to anoint you with a kingly anointing from the heavens that will give you the power to rule in the realm of the spirit our rulership and our governance is in the realm of the spirit we lock down territories we lock down dominions we lock down operations we cause things to exist in a certain way because we have taken on the mantle of God's rulership oh man this excites my spirit and I pray that you will begin to just feel this kingly anointing begin to rise on the inside of you when Jesus came the Bible says he was given a name over every name 
over every name, over all the kings of the earth. He was given dominion over all of these people. Why? Because this name, this name came with a kingly anointing that causes every dominion to bow to it. Of course, you know that in the, in, in the natural, a king is only as good as his name. But his name is always coming. It's a result of his exploits, a result of his conquests, a result of the things that he has done. Now, his name is what represents his kingship. So Jesus has been given a name above every name because his dominion and his kingship is above every other kingship. So the Lord has now made us kings after his order. Kings that will rule on his behalf in the realm of the spirit. Before we worry about the circumstances that are happening naturally, we should be concerned about the circumstances that are happening spiritually. And in fact, the men that God is calling kings are not men in the physical, but these are men who are ruling in the realm of the spirit. You know that uh, people like Daniel, for example, were not kings by name. But there were kings that had rulership over principalities. You all know about the prince of Persia. You know about the prince of Grisha. Now, God anointed Daniel to be able to interpret king's dreams. He was, in fact, ruling in the realm of the spirit. So, no wonder, because of his dominion in the spirit, because of his authority in the spirit, the Bible says that he was caused to become a noble. He was given to be rule, ruler ruler over all the princes of the land he was ruler over all the apart from the king himself daniel was in charge of the entire kingdom this is what the lord is saying that he will arise us in the realm of the spirit to become kings of the land that even if we don't have the natural names of kings we have the spiritual territory that is governing kingdoms and i pray grace over you and jesus mighty name over that the church is supposed to be a body of kings that are ruling over a territory i'll come back to that in a minute <clears throat> but before i forget let's go to the second part which is the priest the bible says he has made us priests unto god and i told you this is a separation unto service this is a separation unto the things that god would want to do a separation unto the purposes of god now priests in the old testament were probably one of the most honorable men that existed now kings had authority i'm telling you to be a king in the old testament I mean, that's it. That's it. It's like being a president of our day or something like that. It was a very honorable one. But a priest was even more honorable. These were the two offices in the Old Testament. These are the two things in the ki every kingdom required a king and a priest. Now, the priestly office was a divine mandate. The priest was the guy who had the connection with God. I mean, if you wanted to know what God was saying... The priest was the man that was the bridge between man and God. A man wouldn't just go and approach God without a priest. You needed a priest. He was the man that connected you to God. Fast forward to the New Testament. Jesus had to come as a priest. He had to come as a priest because it is the priest that is the bridge between man and God. However, the difference is that when he came, he came in the order of Melchizedek, watch this now, to represent us once and for all before God. Now the priest of the Old Testament had to go every year in and out of the Holy of Holies to represent and offer sacrifices. Jesus came to offer sacrifice once at the cross and represent God us to God once after this sacrifice and after that open up the door the curtain is torn so that now man has access to the presence of God however the old order doesn't change it is only a priest that approaches God if you are not a priest you cannot approach God so when the curtain was open, the priesthood was not cancelled. The priesthood was made better. How? That rather than us have men represent us every day, we now come into the presence of God in the name of the high priest. We put on the finished works of Jesus and we are made priests unto God. And now we can approach, like Hebrew says, the throne room of grace confidently and boldly to obtain grace and to help us in our time of need now we are coming 
straight to the presence of God without need that any man represent us because we now have been made priests. Now watch this. This is a beautiful thing. But let me push it forward. Why is this important in our time? The priest in the day never represented himself. Watch this now. So this is the place of service. That the priesthood was always an office of service. It was useless to be a priest if you're not going to represent people. Same thing today. That the Lord is going to raise up men who will not live for themselves. But they will live for their generation. They will live for their family. They will live for the, the, the places that God. They will live for their schools and universities. They will live for their countries. They will be priests unto God concerning the affairs of men. There will be priests and a God who say, God, I pray today, I intercede today, I consecrate today on behalf of my family, on behalf of my nation, on behalf of my, my children, on behalf of my estate. I stand in the gap. I will pray. If nobody else is praying for the days we are living in, I will be a priest and a God because the Lord still says, I will do nothing on the earth unless I find a man, unless I find a priest, unless I find a man that will stand in the gap. Now, the problem today is that our faith has become so personal, we have fixated ourselves on how to get better and forgotten about our priestly role of representing those that cannot go for themselves. And God is saying that I'm raising people who will be selfless in their day. And this is the place where our service unto God is from a priestly mandate. A priest, of course, if we are to look at the Levitical priesthood, priests never owned property. Kings had the entire estate, but priests did not own any property. Their property was what men would bring to the service of God and what people would offer on the altar. That's all that the priests would have. Their joy was that honorable position of serving God. So you, you all remember, uh, if you will, the story where Saul is waiting for a, a, a priest to offer sacrifice on the altar and inquire of the Lord whether they should go for battle. And of course, Samuel is not present at the time. They wait for the man of God. He's not anywhere. So Saul takes it within his own right as a king to offer a sacrifice. When, when, when Samuel shows up finally and he sees what uh, the king had done, he looks at Saul and says, this day your kingdom has been taken away from you. Why? Because you did not keep in your land. If you are a king, keep in your land. Let the priests do what they're supposed to do. Let the king do what he's supposed to do. Let the prophet do what the what you're supposed to do. You cannot offer a sacrifice and you are a king. We see that today where the king's political begin to indulge in priestly or prophetic matters of faith. And of course, they are switching lands and God has never called them to switch those lands. Now, whenever this would happen in the Old Testament, you know somebody is about to die or somebody is about to lose their office. You also remember when Miriam tried to, uh, Miriam and Aaron, you know, they connived and they, they put up this calf and they say, let's, let's create something. They, that's a picture of them trying to to watch this now, to take over a priestly role at a time when they still had a prophet that was supposed to be the reason for their direction. He, Moses was supposed to give them direction, but they took it up on their own inspiration and said, you know what, let's offer a sacrifice. So the Old Testament is quite extreme when it comes to those offices. But watch this now. When Jesus came, and this is my point, Jesus comes as a king, as a priest and a prophet he brings all these offices into one and revelation 1 5 and 6 is saying and he has made us kings and priests now i can also add and prophets unto god and i'll tell you why the prophet part is not given in this particular scripture don't worry so he has made us kings and priests and prophets and god he he brought so now i'm a soul who is a Samuel, a Moses, and an Aaron, I'm all of these offices in one. 
So there is no chance kasabo lahadi kazile that I will offer a sacrifice or I will cross lands and I'm not supposed to cross lands because all these lands have now been put into my spirit. I can govern in the spirit. I can offer sacrifice in the spirit and I can speak in the spirit. I can do all these things because Jesus has made me this kind of person. And this is what ministry is supposed to be. Ministry is supposed to be taking over spiritual territory, taking over priestly offering and taking over the prophetic mantle. Now this is ministry. Now watch this. When Jesus came in the New Testament, and I hope you're flowing with us here. When Jesus came in the New Testament, he comes as a king, a priest, and a prophet. So now check out Matthew chapter number 11. The Bible says in verse 7, and as they departed, Jesus began to say unto the multitudes concerning John, John the Baptist, what went ye out into the wilderness to see? A reed shaken with wind. But what went ye out to see? A man clothed in soft raiment. Behold, they that wear soft clothing are in king's houses. But what went ye out to see? A prophet? Yea, I say unto you, and more than a prophet. For this is he of whom it is written, Behold, I send my messenger before thy face, which shall prepare thy way. Verse 11, verily I say unto you, among them that are born of women, there has not risen a greater than John the Baptist. Notwithstanding, he that is the least in the kingdom is greater than he. And from the days of John the Baptist, the kingdom of heaven suffers violence and the violent take it by force. Verse 13, for all the prophets, watch this now, and all the law prophesied until John. All the prophets and all the law prophesied until John. Verse 14. And if you receive it, this is Elias or Elijah which was for to come. Verse 15. And he that has ears to hear, let him hear. He that has ears to hear, let him hear. There's a lot that is speaking here. But let me quickly, because of time, quickly just give you a, 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 an overview of what's happening here. He asked them three things. Number one, did you go to see a, a reed shaken by wind? Did you go to see a man the way he's clothed? Or did you go looking for a prophet? Three things. But these three things are the king, priest, and the prophet. Did you go to see a reed shaken by wind? The shaking of a reed. That's, that's like a censer. That's the priestly mandate, the sprinkler. Number two, did you go to see a man clothed in soft raiment, the kingly office? Were you looking for a priest? No. Were you looking for a, a king? If you're looking for a king, then go to the palace. Don't go to the desert because this man is not dressed like a king. Number three, did you go to look for a prophet? He says, yeah, more than a prophet. And let me mention this now that I'm here. Many people interpret this by saying that Jesus was more than a prophet. That this is the scripture that talks about Jesus. That's wrong. This scripture is not talking about Jesus being more than a prophet. This scripture is talking about John the Baptist being more than a prophet. And watch this. What made John the Baptist more than a prophet is because unlike the prophets like Isaiah who spoke about Jesus, John the Baptist saw Jesus. This is what made him a more than a prophet because he's talking about somebody he is seeing. It's a prophecy that is having a physical manifestation. And that's why the scriptures say all prophets prophesied until John. After John, there was no more need for a prophet. And that's why in Revelation chapter number 1 verse 5 and 6, the Lord is not making us a prophet. Because if he made us a prophet, would be a, we would, he would have made us prophets to prophesy about a coming. Jesus but Jesus has already come so there's no need for a prophet in revelation revelation is now the revelation of Jesus Christ all we have are priests and kings that are now bringing into play the kingdom the spiritual kingdom and are now offering unto God people spiritual sons and daughters and disciples these things must still be done even after Jesus has come the kingdom must be preached and men must still be saved even though Jesus has come and even risen to the heavens. But when it comes to prophecy about Jesus, it is null and void. There is no more need. So that is why until John, until John, there was no more prophecy about Jesus Christ. You can't say I'm a prophet prophesying about Jesus Christ 
after John. Now, we have prophetic utterances. We have prophetic utterances. But the only prophetic utterance left about Jesus is about his coming. It's about the times and the seasons. It's, a, it's, 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 it's what we call a herald. A herald. A herald is the one that speaks about a time to come. The time of Jesus Christ. But this is about his second coming. However, by the time we shift in Revelation, even Jesus Christ has already showed up. By the time we shift to Revelation, the Lord is making us kings and priests. Watch this now. Who can also make prophetic utterances. I hope this is clear. So he said in John that, however, the one that is listing the kingdom is greater than John the Baptist. Now, why are you greater than John the Baptist? Because you're not talking about Jesus. You are carrying Jesus on the inside of you. You're not talking about Jesus. You're not just seeing him in the flesh. You are now born of him. You a kasubele. He that is joined to the Lord has become one spirit. You're now one spirit with the Lord. You're now as he is, so are you. Now you and Jesus are of the same seed and of the same DNA. However, you still have a kingly office and you still have a priestly mandate that you must do. You must take over territory for the kingdom of God and you must present people for the kingdom of God. I hope you're picking ministry here today. Now our time has really gone. But now let's go back to Revelation chapter number one. And let me just just for a minute push in the kingly mandate for a bit. Now in Revelation chapter number one, Mareka zite karabosha tile mande zile bele ha roste kila da boside le mande shike libera da shide lime ha. So in Revelation chapter number one and verse number five, this is the process. This is the process. Verse five, and now from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness? From Jesus Christ, he's talking to John on the island and he's saying now pick this from jesus who is the faithful witness number one so we are being called as witnesses the great commission is a witness report faithful witness first john of course verse number one he will talk about how he is a witness of the things that they saw the things that have, they they had but also of the word of god that they have held a faithful witness now from Jesus Christ who is a faithful witness watch this if he has made us kings and priests we must also understand that we are witnessing kings and we are witnessing priests a witnessing king is a king that is following a certain existing pattern and the pattern is the pattern after Christ, the pattern after the kingdom of God. So I'm not a king in my own order. I'm not a king in my own right or in my own thinking. I'm a king after a certain king. That's why he is the king of kings. And the pattern of our kingdom, the pattern of our kingly mandate is after Christ. So we rule after Christ. We rule in his stead. We are faithful witnesses. A faithful witness, Paul told Timothy, be a faithful steward a faithful witness is the one that follows follows after the pattern that was set for him so watch this now as sons we don't initiate our own kingdom we are not trying to raise our own empires no there is a kingdom after which we are now beginning to rule so I pray grace over you that because you carry the king on the inside of you, you will be a witness as a king that rules in the pattern of God. Then he says he was the first begotten of the dead. The first begotten of the dead. That word begotten is monogenes, which is talking about of a certain kind. In another part, he will say of the first fruits from the dead. The first begotten of the dead. He was the first to raise. But watch this. When he was raised, we were raised with him into the newness of life. This is key. This is key. The reason why we have to be after the pattern of the first begotten of the dead is to understand the things to which we died. 
and then the things to which we were raised. The things to which we died and the things to which we were raised. Now as a king you understand that I died from a certain cause and I died for a certain cause. The Lord is raising us up. The Bible says unless a seed John 12:24 falls to the ground and dies, unless this king dies, he abideth alone. But if he die, the Bible says he will grow up into a big tree and birds of the air will come and nest into this tree. Many shall be the fruits. Now listen, we have too many people who are alive trying to be kings or they are too alive trying to be priests. These offices are for dead men. These offices are people who are begotten from the dead. I'm not talking to somebody. These are of, you will be a king of a spiritual territory having conquered death. You have conquered the flesh. You have conquered the things that men, that are killing men. Now you are alive unto Christ. The third thing he says, and the prince of the kings of the earth. So Jesus is now our prince, the prince of peace. The prince, of course, is now beginning to talk about his kingly mandate. The prince of the kings of the earth. These kings of the earth are first natural and then they are also spiritual. He is the prince over us and he's governing us. But we are governing on his state. So now look at the process. He says, Unto him that loved us, he washed us from our sins in his own blood, and then he has made us kings and priests unto God. He loved us, he washed us, and then he made us. Do you notice that you didn't do any of these things? Do you notice that your part is to receive by faith, by grace through faith? To receive by grace through faith. Number one, he loved us when we couldn't love him. The Bible says it's not that we loved him first, but that he loved us. While we were yet in our sin, Christ loved us. The love of God led us to repentance. He loved us before we could even love him. Number two, he then washed us. You see, he didn't wash us and love us. We didn't qualify and then he loved us. He loved us and then washed us. He loved us and then qualified us. It's not because we are right that the Lord does right to us. No, he does right to us because he is right. He can make us right. His love makes us right. He loved us and then he washed us. He loved us and he made us the kind of people that he wanted us to be. Now, why did he wash us? And this is what I'm saying. He washed us to separate us for his service, to separate us for a certain mandate. So he washed us and then made us. So the truly washed are the truly made. And they have been truly loved. I know that I'm walking in the love of God. Because I am now beginning to understand that his love was to qualify me for his service. Now he made us kings and he made us priests. This is not something I want. This is something that he has chosen for me. This is something he has separated me for. He has separated me to be a king and to be a priest. Okay? You have cleansed us with your blood. Same thing he said in chapter number one. Out of every kindred, tongue, people, and nation. Verse number 10. And has made us unto our God. He has made us unto our God. Kings and priests. And we shall reign on the earth. We shall reign on the earth. Whether now, which is a partial fulfillment of scripture, or later on the thousand years, which is a a complete fulfillment of scripture, or even after the thousand years, which is an eternal fulfillment of scripture. Let me say that again. We shall reign with him on the earth. Romans 5, I believe verse 17 says the same thing. We got the gift of grace and righteousness. And we shall reign with him on the earth as kings and as priests on the earth. Now on the earth during the thousand years on the earth for eternity as we eternally fulfill this scripture. So the kings and the priests is what God has made us. We are not just made sons. We are not just made uh, believers. We have been made kings and priests. Now let's go to application as we close this. 
This is the application that the Lord is bringing to us in this season in the name of Jesus. That beginning this month of July, and like I said, it's not just for the month of July. This is going to exist for as long as you are alive. But this is a revelation that is coming to us in this month of July. The Lord says, I am raising governors in the spirit. I say some things and I feel them in my spirit. He says, I'm raising governors in the spirit. I'm raising men. And I pray this is you. I pray this is me. Men that will govern territories in the spirit. This is what it means to be a son of the time. This is what it means to be an ambassador of Christ. Is we are coming as a king with a word of the law. A word that brings order. Divine order. Kingdom order. We are coming to reign on the earth as a mandate from God. And in this month, the Lord begins to start up in you, for your family, for your nation, for, for your workplace. He begins to start up in you a kingly anointing that brings about governance in the spirit. The second thing that begins to happen to you practically, and as we talk about application, is the Lord begins to start up in you a hunger and a desire for this place where you begin to present people unto God as an offering because watch this now you are representing God's people to him you you just get the sense of a desire to pray and intercede for God's people for God's work for the things that God is doing so as you rule you pray as you rule and govern you intercede as you rule and govern you begin to walk in your calling and your purposes in God there is just this urgency in the hour that begins to eat you up I pray grace over you in the name of Jesus today as we conclude this may the Lord cause you to be a king and a priest in your day your kingly mandate is causing you to walk in a place of dominion anything that had had master over you the Lord says, I give you mastery over it. The king uses a word. And the Lord says, I put my word on you. This kingly mandate is really what he gave prophet Jeremiah. He says that I will put my word on your lips. Then whatever you uproot, you will uproot and you will establish. You will plant and you will tear down. Kingdoms. In our day, these kingdoms are not physical. These kingdoms are spiritual. So the Lord is saying you will tear down, but you will also plant. You will plant the cause of the kingdom wherever you are, in your family, in your business. You plant God's cause because the word of the king has been put on your lips. Number two, he says, I give you a priestly mandate. You begin to pray and intercede. You raise sons. You raise disciples. You are given a priestly mandate in Jesus' mighty name. You will present, watch this now, God's people holy and acceptable unto him. But I love this. It will have a prophetic rendition to it. Why? Because you will also tell people what God is saying. May that be your portion today in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Listen, I want you to take some time and subscribe to this YouTube channel because I'm going to pick up this teaching in our Bible study even as we talk about chapter number one of the book of Revelation. I also want to let you know that we have a website that is coming up and soon you'll be able to just get all our teachings and everything that we need on this, just this one platform. It will be at thekingdomtabernacle.com thekingdomtabernacle.com and I'm telling you everything you desire for your spiritual nourishment you will find it at this one place audios, videos and even devotions and I pray that you'll be able to just go and visit it and uh, just subscribe to our different platforms so that you may receive ministry but now I pray for you in the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Ghost may the Lord that has brought this word alive in the month of July also cause it to resonate with your spirit in Jesus' mighty name. May you be like a Moses that leads God's people to their promised land. May you be like an Aaron that is dressed in honorable garments, separated for the cause of God. 
May you be like prophet Zacharias that carries the revelation of Jesus in your hands. May you be like King Saul that is chosen to be the man that represents God to his people. May you be like John the Baptist that speaks out more than a prophet. Because for you, your prophetic word is not for something in the future. Your prophetic word will be for something that is actually manifesting. Those are all good. But I pray that you carry the mantle of Jesus. Who was king of kings. Who was high priest. And who was, who was not just a prophet speaking. But who was the fulfillment of all prophecy. May that be your portion in the name of Jesus. And then lastly. May you be with the saints in the book of Revelation. That have been washed. That have been loved. That have been washed. And that have been made. Kings and priests unto God. Listen, your life is not for you. Your life is unto God. I pray the grace for separation. Separate yourself as a king. You know, kings are not always in the public arena. Kings are not trying to catch up with everybody else. Kings are in their palaces ruling and governing. Come on, somebody. Kings are not trying to, to, to have friends. And, no, no. Kings have a chair. Kings have a position, a place. Kings just care about their position. Am I still in position? Am I still in place? That's what kings worry about. Kings worry about territory, dominions, principalities. That's, that's it. Not, not friends. In fact, most kings don't have many friends. But I pray for you that you dress up in your kingly anointing. Begin to speak the word of God even as the Lord gives it to you. I pray for a priestly mandate, separated. Religion has helped us understood, understand how to appreciate the priest. You see that the priest is not running, he's, he's, he's walking in slow motion. <laughs> the, the, the priest is an honorable place, separated from certain things. Separate yourself. Paul says, come out from among them and be ye separate. Touch not the unclean thing and the Lord will accept you priestly mandate Lord give us this grace that whenever people look at you in your family they see what God is saying whenever people look at you in your house or in your casibele, there's this attraction that you, there's this God you carry to people come on help me here somebody master bricas they're not saying what's up they're not talking to you and saying hey man what's up no, they look at you and they see the honorable man of God that you are, the king and the priest, and they are inquiring of the Lord. They are saying, can you pray with us so we hear what the Lord is saying for our lives? May people want to join hands with you and pray because they believe that when their hands touch your hands, something supernatural happens. This is what God is calling us into. I need to close this program, but I, I, I hear prophetic words just coming out. I pray for you that is listening to me. You, you, you know, people will talk to you like they talk to Jesus. You know, Mary and Martha said, if you had been here, our brother wouldn't have died. P people will look for you. And, they, and when you show up, there's hope that comes. There's, they say, come, 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 come. Let's take you to where we buried him. There will be something about you that brings light and hope to people. That as long as you're there, things are going to fall into place. Men never worried about God speaking when Moses was there. The Bible says that they would all go to the entrance of their tents, Exodus 33. And they would look on over to the entrance of Moses' tent. Because they, the cloud would come and it would stay at the entrance of the tent. Because they knew. As long as Moses is alive, God is going to show up and God is going to speak. I pray that grace over you in the name of Jesus. People who, who last heard from God three years ago will hear him because they have come into your vicinity. Grace over you. This is the month where we manifest as kings and priests unto God. That word unto God is ringing in my ears. Not unto ourselves, not unto church, not unto men. But unto God, may your life be lived unto God. I pray for you today in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Ghost. This is Apostle Joshua and we will always be here to bring ministry to you. 
use the numbers on the screen to get back to us and thank you all who are giving your offertory the members of our church that are giving your tithe and everybody that's supporting us in any way by prayer thank you so much and may the grace of our lord jesus christ the love of god the father and the fellowship of the holy ghost be with us all both now and forever amen and amen <music>